let's go and consider in particular two cases. Uh, in the first one, uh, we set the discount rate, rate to, to zero, but there is a, a positive decay rate. Well, in this case, uh, uh, these equations collapse to the fact that the marginal benefits of the usage of fertilizers must be equal to the marginal damage of, of uh, the usage of fertilizer or in particular because this one we can express this one in terms of the marginal damage of, uh, of uh, the, the stock of pollutants so that the marginal damage of in terms of the stock divided by the, uh, the decay rate must be equal to the marginal benefit in terms of uh, the flow of uh, uh, fertilizers that we, we use. Uh, second case of uh, the steady case that, uh, that we steady state, uh, state okay that uh, uh, we can analyze is one uh, uh, instead we have a, a discounting when alpha the decay remain to be uh, positive what do you think will happen when we have a discounting well as the benefit is immediate but the damage is future of course if we set up a uh, discount rate we care, care we care more about the present and less about the future so having th this these positives will uh, increase the level of consumption the level of uh, uh, fertilizer that we use today and w we care less about uh, uh, damage so in terms of uh, of of the major and benefits, we have higher. Uh, okay, so if this is the original uh, curve of the marginal benefit, when we multiply by something positive, we we increase these curves, and this lead to the uh, to both the damage and benefit marginal to increase, but also to the usage of fertilizer to also increase. Finally, what happens what, when it is alpha to be equal uh, to zero? Well, the problem, of course, here is that alpha is the denominator here. So when alpha is equal to zero, it means that our pollutants will always remain uh, there it will never uh, be removed. It doesn't will never decay, and the only possibility the only steady state possible is that the uh, the emissions also is equal to zero because if uh, uh, this emission would be positive the stock would increase without any bounds and uh, the only possible steady state ends for uh, when r is positive but alpha is uh, is equal to zero is to have no more emissions so this uh, um, means that this doesn't mean that there will be never be emissions it means that there can be usage of uh, fertilizers but then this usage has to reduce and go to zero so the steady state must be reached to a level of uh, uh, pollutions equal uh, of usage of fertilizers in this specific case equal to zero and this is a very strong result because this means that in general any activity that generate a, a pollutant that is perfectly persistent would have to come to an end first or, 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 or later it cannot be carried on indefinitely although this is true for uh, the natural uh, uh, decay rate but we can always think that we can uh, do like in our uh, previous models and have some sort of artificially uh, mitigation artificially clean up that will cost something but will uh, 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 re reduce the uh, the p will reduce the, the the stock of pollutants let's go in instead to uh, to analyze the dynamic 
of this model we know from the first order conditions that lambda must be equal to minus the marginal benefit so if we take the derivative of both sides with respect to times here we obtain the um, derivative the, uh, of, uh, of lambda over times and here we apply the chain rule again so if this one is a uh, um, function of 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 uh, m so this marginal uh, be uh, the marginal uh, uh benefit in relation with the emissions uh to take the derivative of, of times when it is the emissions that uh, uh, depend from times we have we make a second derivative of the uh, benefit with uh, uh, relation to the emissions and first and finally we take the uh, derivative of the uh, emissions with uh, respect with times when we consider then the equation of motion that we know by the um, uh, by computing the equation of motion of the uh, of the um, uh, cost state variables we replace we, we we can equate these two terms and obtain uh, uh, these equations when we finally call it uh, consider again uh, uh, lambda as a, a minus the benefit we f we end up to write uh, the equation of motions of the fertilizers use and together with the other equation of motion of the stock of pollutants that we have from our uh, definition of the models we come out with this set of two equations that define the uh, dynamics of our 2k variables we have now everything we need to solve this, uh, this problem and let's going to do it uh, uh, um, with one uh, uh, numerical example let's going to assume that we have uh, two positive levels of uh, uh, the decay uh, rate and the interest rate equal to 0 0.5 and 0 0.1 uh, respectively and we assume uh, uh, this specific uh, uh, damage and uh, benefit uh, uh, functions as indicated here at this point we can compute the first and the second derivative of the benefits with respect to the fertilizer use and of the damage well now given the two equations in the previous slides we can uh, just uh, uh, replace the values and we obtain these uh, two numerical equations and what are these these uh, are called autonomous systems because they are first order differential equation systems in two variables that again like in our previous models do not explicitly depend from time so do of course the uh, specific amount of uh, uh, polluters and the stock of polluters will be different in times but the way they relate with each other this doesn't depend from from times and we'll see that in the in the next slides but when we have a, a situation like this we can at least study it uh, uh, graphically with uh, phase diagrams but before that let's going to solve for the steady states in the steady states we have that both uh, the stock and uh, the uh, flow of uh, uh, fertilizers remain uh, uh, I use uh, fertilizers uh, and polluters uh, uh, equivalently uh, across this uh, this example because we don't have a function of in this simple model a function of the polluters as a, uh, as a, fra a fraction of the fertilizers we assume that uh, all the fertilizers generate a, a, a pollution 
So this must be equal uh, uh, to, to zero. And when we set both equal to zero, we have a, a simple uh, equation of a sy simple system of equations in, uh, in uh, two and no that we can solve by substitutions. And we'll finally obtain the steady state values that are, are positives because both our alpha and R are uh, also positive. Given the characteristics of uh, our system that qualify as an autonomous system, we can hence uh, study it uh, at least uh, uh, graphically. So in this chart, we are representing uh, the level of uh, um, fertilized use and the level of the stock of uh, uh, fertilization uh, uh, pollutions on this axis. So at the level of M equal to nine and A equal to 18, we have uh, the, um, the steady state. This line is the line where, uh, where uh, the, um, there is no variation in the level of the stock. So if we are exactly on any point in this line, the, there is no variation of, uh, of, uh, of the stock of pollutants. If we are on any point in uh, this line, this line represents the, uh, the line where uh, there is no variations in the um, level of uh, uh, fertilization uh, usage. So, of course, the equilibrium he is at the cross of the two lines. But what happens if we are, if we are not exactly on, on, on this point? We see here that the derivative of the variation in time of uh, the stock with respect of uh, itself is negative because of this minus here. So what does it mean is that if you take this, this axis, more we go on over the bottom, more the increase of, uh, uh, more the variation of, uh, of, uh, of, um, of the stock increase. And if this is equal, where it is equal to zero, it means that everything on higher is negative and everything lower it's positive the same things for what it consider what when we consider the uh, the uh, usage of uh, the fertilizers in this case when we take the first derivative of uh, uh, the time variation of the fertilizer over its uh, uh, fertilizers in this case it is positive so every time we move from the left to the right of this chart, we are increasing uh, uh, the, uh, the variation of the fertilizer, fertilizer usage. And if this is where it's equal, uh, sorry, if this one is where it is equal to zero, everything that is on the right of, of, uh, of it means a positive uh, uh, variation of the stock and uh, everything on the left is uh, means a negative uh, variation of the uh, of the stock of m so when we are on uh, on 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 this uh, area on this quadrant everything when we are here the next moment in times we have an increase of A and also an increase of M because both here are, 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 are increasing. When we are on this quadrant here, every time on for each point here, the next moment in time will have an increase of A but a decrease of M and you s can see here and that's you can see how 
any point will move in these other two uh, quadrants. So if we are exactly on this blue line with a point here, next moment in time will increase and go on the left and we go here and go here and go here and so on. And we finally reach the equilibrium. But if we are not exactly on this lane, let's say that we are ex we are we are here. Uh, well, sorry for this line. If we are here, if we if we are here, the next moment in time we go up and left, and we arrive here, here, here. Then we go up and left, and we go here. We go up and left, and we go here. We go up and left. We go here, we go up and left, and we go here. Then when we arrive here, we change the direction because now A become negative. So here we, we just move on the left without changing. But when we, we, we go here, then also this one starting to become negative. And uh, we end up with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, something that go toward the, the, this direction here. So. But we see that this uh, equilibrium point is not stable, is a, uh, what is called a saddle point, only if we part from a very specific, we depart from a very specific uh, uh, pathway, we will reach this uh, uh, equilibrium point. All other points uh, that are not across this, uh, this line will not lead to a stable uh, point.